Hey folks, welcome back to another video. All right, so you've got an Oculus Quest 2, but you also have a VR ready gaming PC and you wanna play some great PC VR games. However, you're not sure if you should play wirelessly or wired as you want to have the best experience possible, but with the lowest cost and you want to know what to do. Well, have no fear, Wackman is here. Today, we are going to go through four options to play PC VR games. First, wireless PC VR using AirLink and how to actually use it. And then virtual desktop, again showing you how to use it and then see which one is better using a cheap Wi-Fi 6 router. Then using the official link cable, which costs around $80 versus a $20 cable creation one. And seeing is there a difference in quality? Then my view of what is the best to play PC VR games on and what I recommend. So if you enjoyed the video and find it helpful, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, I've noticed 92% of you guys aren't subscribing to the channel, but still watching the videos. So if there's any particular reason why, then please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, press that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. Not only that, remember we are almost at 15k subscribers and I have a 15k special giveaway on right now, where we will give away either I expect you to die too, Stride or Population 1 and the winner gets to choose which game they want. All you have to do to enter is like the video, subscribe to the channel, put on bell notifications and comment hashtag wackman 15k down below. Well, let's get straight into the video. Now, the first thing I want to mention is that I'm using a relatively cheap $50 Wi-Fi 6 router, which works pretty well for me. I've left the link in the description below for it. All right, so let me break down how to install each one and then see which is better. I'm only going to show you this as a high level overview, but I've already done a full tutorial of each one and it's in the description below. So AirLink, which is the wireless option that Oculus has come out of for PC VR games and it's free. And this is how you turn it on. First, download and install the Oculus app on your PC. I've left a link to it in the description. Then open it up, click on settings, then click on beta, then toggle on AirLink. Next, go into your Oculus Quest headset. Make sure you're on the same Wi-Fi network as your PC. Then click on quick settings. Then on the top right, there's a little cog icon. Click that and then scroll down to experimental features and toggle on AirLink. Then it will search for your PC. If you're not on the same network, it won't be able to find it. So make sure you are. Once it has found your PC, click on pair and then press launch. Then the Oculus Rift software will load up and you're ready to play. However, if you want to play Steam VR games, you will also need to download and install Steam VR, which you can do if you've got the Steam application on your PC. Next, let's get on to virtual desktop. Now this costs $20. Also, make sure you get the Quest version, as the PC version won't work. I've added a link to the Quest version in the description below, so buy that and download it on your Quest. Now the rest is a similar process as before. First, download and install the Oculus app, same as before, as well as Steam VR. Next, we need to download and install the virtual desktop streamer app on the PC, and then add your Oculus username in it. That's it. So it's just basically one extra step. Okay, now to compare both of these. However, if you're looking for technical numbers and a lot of data, unfortunately, I'm not gonna go through all of that. From my perspective, if I wanted to decide between the two, I just wanna see what looks better, lags less, and has more features, and is easy to connect with without any compatibility issues. So these are the things I'm going to concentrate on. So first, what's easier to connect to? Well, they both have their advantages and disadvantages. They're both quite easy to connect, apart from the fact that Virtual Desktop needs an app downloaded, as well as the streamer app running on your PC. For AirLink, you just need AirLink enabled on your Oculus PC app, and then you can connect it within your headset. So I don't really think it's an issue either way. However, a big advantage Virtual Desktop has that it can connect to your PC even if your Quest and your PC are on different networks, which AirLink can't, as both need to be on the same network for that. Meaning, you can even potentially play PC VR games away from your home. However, it's not really that practical unless you have really good internet speeds. But this is how you could also use cloud-based PC gaming. Whereas for AirLink it wouldn't work. But an advantage for AirLink is that all of the Oculus apps will work without any issues. Whereas for virtual desktop, since it's actually through Steam VR that it's working, some native Oculus games might cause some compatibility issues. However, I found an easy fix to this by simply installing Revive, which lets you play Oculus games on non-Oculus devices, even though the Quest 2 is an Oculus device. Now, you might be thinking, well, what's the point of getting virtual desktop if AirLink is free? Well, I'll tell you why. Now, this may not be applicable to everyone, but it is definitely the case for me. When I try and play through AirLink, my games are unplayable. The lag is so much that the screen can't catch up sometimes. The quality is so much worse, it's ridiculous. Personally, I never use AirLink anymore. It actually used to be pretty decent when it initially launched. However, whatever updates Oculus did completely messed it up for me. The only place it works at all is the Oculus Home, but when you launch into any game, that's it, it becomes unplayable. On the other hand, Virtual Desktop, apart from some of the compatibility issues I just mentioned, which is still easy to resolve, it works like a dream. Kai Godin, the guy who developed Virtual Desktop, is an actual genius, since it's one guy versus the whole Oculus development team. Plus, he's made it even better. Whilst I was doing the test for these videos, I was shocked how good the performance and visuals were, even more than they used to be before. 
Honestly, if I were you, first I would test to see if Airlink works for you since it's free and it won't cost anything to check. However, if it doesn't work, then don't simply lose hope. First, make sure you are on a 5 GHz network on your modem, as wireless VR is terrible on 2.4 GHz. Then if you want to carry on with wireless, give virtual desktop a try. If it doesn't work, you can return it within 2 hours and you'll get your money back. However, it is definitely worth the price. Now, let's say you don't have a 5 GHz router. Or maybe you do, but want to see is it better just to use a wired cable instead of wireless? So let's first go with whether you need the official link cable or will the $20 cheaper cable creation version give you the exact same result for a quarter of the price. Also I just want to mention that the people at cable creation have sent me one for the review. So let's first compare the cables themselves. The official oculus link cable is a fiber optic cable which means it can transfer data incredibly fast meaning no noticeable latency. Whereas the USB to USB-C cable is a copper cable, not able to transfer data as fast. Additionally, the official cable is probably 25% thinner than the cable creation one and is therefore also lighter. Both cables are 16 feet long, so the test is fair. However, if for some reason you live in a mansion or want to play in a warehouse, or maybe attach the cable across the skirting boards or walls in the room so it's not seen, which is actually a good idea, and therefore need a cable longer than 16 feet, you can't really do that with the official link cable. However, Cable Creation also sell an extender that costs $17 for another 16.4 feet without losing any visual fidelity, or at least any noticeable one. But even if you combine the cost of the extension cable, it's still more than half the price of the official link cable. Another thing is the official cable has a USB-C connector, where on your motherboard you will need a USB-C connection port, which seems to be quite rare, but even if you don't have it, you can still get a USB-C to USB adapter. However, that does degrade the quality a little, plus it's an added expense. The cable creation version is a USB 3.0 connection, which majority of the gaming PCs or laptops actually have. So connection wise, I have to give it to cable creation. So the only two things left are comfort and most importantly, the visual quality. Now in terms of comfort, the cable creation cable is a lot more noticeable than the official link cable. If you don't tie the cable on your headset in some way, since it's much heavier. However, if you're able to tie the cable to your Quest with a clip, which you should do anyway to avoid breaking your USB-C port on your Quest, I've linked some in the description as well. But with that connected, the difference is a lot less. It will still be a little bit heavier since the cable will pull down the headset more, but it's better than what you would find on the Rift S. Although I would advise adding the clips for either cable for the safety of your Quest. Now finally, the visual fidelity, which is better. To be honest, they're both very similar. I would say they're around 90 to 95% similar. Where the official link is probably 5 to 10% better than the cable creation one. But honestly, the only way you notice that is if you're actually looking for it. Which is obviously what I was doing for this comparison. Otherwise, in normal gameplay, you won't be able to tell at all. Both cables have not given me any issues in terms of crashing or compatibility either. So there isn't much to mention there. So personally, if I had to choose one, I'd probably go with the cable creation one since it's significantly cheaper with not much difference as well as being able to use any USB 3.0 port. Now the real question is, should you choose the cable or should you go with wireless PC VR with virtual desktop? Well, a thing to consider with both of these is virtual desktop will add extra load on your PC since it's running additional applications. However, it depends on your PC but it's really not that much more. Although the main thing to consider between them is your router setup. Do you have a decent 5 GHz router? If you don't, then it's a no-brainer, you can only go with the wired setup. For my tests, like I mentioned earlier, I've been using a relatively cheap Wi-Fi 6 router, link is in the description. But with that, I'm able to get fantastic visual quality on virtual desktop. So do I still use a link cable? Yes, I do. When I'm playing games that are very hard on my PC, such as Project Cars 3, for example, and where I'm not moving much, I will use a cable. But when I'm playing a game where I might actually need to move around, or even if I'm showing VR to new people, I always go wireless. Because one, the new players get tangled in wires, and two, it doesn't really give a great impression when it is wired, as opposed to being wireless and free. So, what's my recommendation? Well, if you were thinking about getting the official link cable, I would say don't. Instead, get virtual desktop, the cable creation cable, and potentially a $50 Wi-Fi 6 router, if you need that. That will cost you around the same price of the one official link cable. I've left the link of all these in the description below. But don't get the router until you've seen that you need one. Your Wi-Fi 5 router might be perfectly fine for you. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you decide to do and why. It's always interesting to read. Well, that's all folks. Now hopefully you have an idea what you should get. And if you found the video helpful, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also remember to enter the giveaway. It's almost over. Well, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay safe and see you next time.